Hello there. My name is Midmask from the YouTube channel Midmask, as you would know by now from the 17,000 other videos I just hit my chair to my left. <laughs> World building is an important part of Dungeons and Dragons, as we all know. I made a video describing how to add in things that would make your world building just a little better. But today we're going to talk about the things you should avoid while world building. There are lots more than five things that you should avoid, but these are the more important things that I thought, like, yeah, you should definitely stay away from these. So without further ado, let's get into the top five things you should avoid in Dungeons & Dragons. That's not going to fit on this side of the screen, but I like to do this anyway. <laughs> First thing I usually always see people mess up on during world building is giving towns no purpose, or a village no purpose, or a city no purpose. They just throw them in the world because they thought a town should just be there. And obviously, there are some real world examples of someone walking into the middle of the Death Valley and being like, hey, let's put a town here. <laughs> and of course, that makes sense in some scenarios, especially back when the gold rush was happening and they had things to do out there. But in a more medieval setting, most towns and villages have a purpose. So instead of just having these boring sort of cardboard cutouts of a town, give your town a little bit of personality. Who lives there? Why do they live there? Is there a river nearby? Do they do fishing? Do they do mining? Do they do farming? There's a lot of really easy ways to give your towns and cities and villages purpose without having to go super crazy deep about it. Now, if you want to go super crazy deep about it, by all means do so, because that's always really cool, but don't feel obligated to. Number two, try not to work on things that are all the way out here in your world, but your players are you know, right here. What I mean by this is, say your players start in a village in the grassy plains of, you know, a kingdom. But you're working on, like, the Dwarven Forge several hundreds, if not thousands of miles away. Now, sure, working on your world one way or another is usually pretty productive, but when you're expending all your time and energy to things the players are currently not even interacting with, the quality of the things they are interacting with may be sacrificed, and you know they might walk into a town that doesn't have a purpose, or they might run into a lot of important NPCs who are kind of underbaked, underdeveloped. So make sure when you are making your world, you're making it kind of like a bu expanding bubble around your players. Start inward, work your way outward. Number three, and this is something I've run into a lot personally, is as a dungeon master, our players will ask us questions that we do not have the answers to because simply, you know, we didn't prepare them, we didn't even think that was a question they could ask for this campaign, but alas, it is. And usually we have to improv. And usually this might scare you into you know, focusing on the tiny little details, but hold on a minute. Like, instead of spending hours on the tiny little intricate details of the elven political system because your player asked about it one time, let's try something a little different and something a lot easier. Try blocking out important details of the history of something or details about something. Let's use the elven political system again as an example. Instead of being like, yes, this law was made because of this thing, this thing, and this thing. It said, what if all these laws were made because of a great war that happened long ago? And because of that, these anti-magic laws are in place. That's a very easy explanation. Doesn't take a whole lot of thinking. And it gives enough detail to the players. Yeah, hey, they exist for this purpose. That's really it. There's not a whole lot of very specific details. Now, if you want to start adding in very specific political details into your G&D campaign, I'm not going to stop you, but make sure your players are into that sort of thing. <laughs> and the takeaway from this is just do not worry about the little details. Just block things out like you're blocking out an essay. Number four, not reading the room of your players. Not reading the room is a very important thing when you are running with players. And what I mean by this is, say you're running a world all about like grunge and war and blood, and your happy-go-lucky human fighter, you know, with his sparkling hair running through the forest, he gets hit by a twig, contracts 16 new diseases, loses his arm, and dies 48 hours later. Your players 
probably didn't sign up for that. Make sure the world you are building is the same world your players want to play in. You don't want to make something quite the opposite, say it's very sparkly fey world, but you know, all your players are like big grunge people who want you know, war, blood, and rusty axes. Just make sure you're communicating a lot of what your idea for the world is and what the players expect from that world. And lastly, and this is a very important one for a lot of people out there, as a dungeon master, please communicate any homebrew changes, you know, home rules, house rules, any class, race changes, etc. Et you don't want your players coming into the campaign and being like, okay, I'm going to play a cleric, and they only find out that cleric has 16 new abilities and half of them are also just gone. Or that all the feats that they know and love are completely changed and rebalanced for the you know, thematics of your campaign. This can often leave players confused or even upset when things are changed because a lot of people just don't like change. So before the campaign even begins, the world, the one shot, what have you, make sure you tell your players, this is what I changed. Uh, if you don't like it, maybe we can work on something. Just don't leave them in the dark. That's it for this video. I hope this helped you. I hope you found it helpful, insightful, that sort of thing. I bid you adieu. Adios.